Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, for this honor. Um, would you just mind playing the keyboard for me? What a joy and what an honor. Praise the Lord. Okay, I hope you understand my English. All right, next 20 years, what do you think God has for your life, for this church? Anybody interested to know? Only three, all right. <laughs> the rest of you, the door is there, you can head out because I'm going to speak about the next 20 years. Hallelujah. Just play for me. You know, uh, before I get to know you better, Pastor Daniel, maybe I just want to leave a few words for you. So we are looking at next 20 years. I don't know where this number comes from. It's somewhere. All right, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 3.20, sorry. Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or dream. So that scripture will become very real for you the next 20 years. And I believe the Spirit of God is about to enlarge your vision, your dreams, and what you plan to do, and the call and the purpose of God upon your life. You have a great call. You have an apostolic call, apostolic call upon your life, and you'll be an apostolic voice in this city, in this nation, in the days ahead. And God has called this church to be an Antioch church in Acts 13. The church in Antioch uh, recognized the fivefold ministry, raised the fivefold ministry, and sent out the fivefold ministry. Some point in the future, there will be a, a training school, a Bible training school in this place. And I say, God's going to enlarge your territory. He's going to give you uh, more places to walk. And I believe God's going to bring people from other nations that have not represented here. And just like the great commission of Jesus that go into all the world. And I believe God is getting you ready for something great. That Great Britain was great. Not so great now, but you're going to be great. And so is this church that when you took over the leadership, it was just building the foundation. And you're still building the foundation. But the season is about to change where you're going to see the structures, the growth, the coming up. And it's going to be visible. And God has placed you for such a time as this. You're going to be a father to many other pastors. You're going to be a spiritual father and a mentor to other pastors. And your leadership, your authority, and your ministry will be recognized in this city, in these nations, and other nations. God is about to connect you with some key people from other nations. And you have a sense of call for international ministry, and God will get you ready the next 20 years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you excited today? God's going to touch some young people and bring them to church. The next move of God in Britain is going to be God touching young people. You're going to see young people, 30 and below, coming to Jesus. So get ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, get ready. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, this morning I'm going to share with you. Uh, thank you, Gladys. You can take your seat. I'm going to share with you the birth of a new season. There are three key words here. Birth, new, season. You know, our lives is made up of seasons. Our life is like a book. It has many chapters. It also has many seasons that we go through. Ecclesiastes 3 says that there's a time and a season under heaven. So in our life, you look, you find there's a season to be born, a season to go to school and be educated, a season to make money, and a season to give away. Especially those who are 70 and above. I hope you have written a will. So the birth is something very significant. And I believe 
God is birthing a new season in your nation and in this church. God is birthing a new season in your nation and in your church. We read about the Welsh Revival and how God moved mightily through great men like Smith Wilgersworth. I believe it's coming back because God has not forgotten your nation and God has not forgotten this church. Do I hear an amen? amen? So I believe that you are here gathered to receive this word and as you continue to believe and press on and pray through, just like the wells that was being dug in Isaac's time, in, in Abraham's time, was stopped. But Isaac, the new generation that came, he began to dig those wells the father has dug. And the Philistines come and take it, and take it, and take it. And the fourth time, God says, I grant you a rare buff. I will make room for you. And no man, no devil will touch it. And Pastor Daniel, may God give you a rare buff. May God give this church a rare buff that you're going to dig wells that will stop the wells of revival, the wells of the move of God, the glory of God that's going to come and sweep this nation. And I I believe you have a part of what is going about to do in these last days. I hope you are excited this morning because God is about to birth a new season. The last three years has been a nightmare, a trauma, a loss, a disappointment of the pandemic. Some have lost their job, their loved ones, their career, their business. They have lost so many things. But God sent me here today to tell you there is a birth of a new season. You have heard bad news, but you are about to hear good news. So turn to your neighbor and say, get ready for good news. I got an important announcement to make. The best is yet to come. I say the best is yet to come. God woke me up this morning to give me this message for you. There's going to be a birth of new season. You're about to hear good news. Proverbs 25, 25 says that just like cold water to a weary soul in summer, so is good news from a far country. I want to declare to you this morning that you're about to hear some wonderful good news, breakthrough news, wonderful news of what God is about to do in your life, in this church, and in your nation. Genesis 7 was bad news. Genesis 6, the Bible says, Noah found favor with God. God was going to wipe the whole human race in Noah's time, but the Bible says, Noah found grace. May you this morning found grace with the Lord, because God has an assignment and a work for your life. And Noah found grace, and he and his family were saved from the destruction of the flood. And now they were in the ark, in the book of Genesis 7. They were in the ark for some time. How long were they in the ark? Now, if you read your Bible, come with me to Genesis 7, verse 24. The Bible says, the water prevailed on the earth 150 days. Wow. How many of you have been to cruise? Don't put up your hand. Imagine you're going for a cruise for seven days. And then after seven weeks, you still have not landed. Well, the first seven days was glorious, right? You're having holiday. But after seven days is over, your holiday became a nightmare and a fear because you're not landing. Anybody taken a flight? Imagine you're taking a flight to, uh, I mean, to Malaysia or Nigeria and you never land. It's scary, right? There's so much fear, uncertainty. Now, that was exactly what Noah and the family were, were facing. They were in the water for so long. Not one week, not 10 weeks. 150 days. Say 150 days. Five months. 
Anybody had been a voyage, a journey for five months, you know it's very long, right? So there is no change. Bad news. All over people died, drowned. But Genesis 8, verse 1, I really like it. The Bible says, Then God remembered Noah. Hallelujah. And not only that, it says, Every living thing and all the animals with him in the ark. I want you to underline animals. That includes monkey, donkey, turkey. How many of you believe God created you far superior, far more valuable than the monkeys, the donkeys, and the turkeys for Christmas. Only five hands. I need to pray deliverance for the rest of you. Now, my question is, if God remember those animals, aren't you more valuable than God remembers you? Now, you may be going through a difficult time and sometimes you wonder whether God remembers you. I want you to know this morning, whatever you went through, the worst, the valley of tears, the disappointment, the loss, maybe you cheated, you were scammed, maybe you lost a loved one, maybe your son backslided or something happened, God still remembers you. I say God still remembers you. In fact, he has written your name into the palm of his hand. And he did something. He knows the pandemic that you went through the last three years. He did something. The Bible says he calls a wind. Say a wind. God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. I want to declare to you this morning, there is a wind of change coming to Britain. There's a wind of change coming upon your life. There's a wind of change coming to CLC. I said there is a wind. And God is birthing something exciting, something new. May I give you a word of wisdom? Don't criticize the politician. Pray for them. There is hope in Britain. Recently in Malaysia, the political scenario was so bad, and somebody says Malaysia is going to the drain. Someone said, I said, no, it's not going to the drain. It's already in the drain. But you know, there is hope. I said there is hope in Christ. We got a new prime minister, and I believe God's going to use him to turn things around. May you have a new prime minister that will cause UK to be turned around, Great Britain to be great again. Amen. And I believe your call, your call, your grace upon Great Britain to send missionaries around the world, you will see it happen again. Do I hear an amen? So God remembered and caused a wind of change. May God cause the wind of change to come upon your negative situation. And there's going to be turnaround, there's going to be breakthrough, and you're going to see answers and solutions and blessing that you have never seen before. Amen? Simply just trust Him. Turn to your neighbor and say, just trust Him. Just trust Him when you go through a situation you don't understand. Just trust Him when things are so uncertain. Just trust Him when you're going through valley of tears. How, how many of you are going through a difficult time right now? Going to trial, difficulty, financial challenge, sickness. Anybody here? Wow, this is a wonderful church. Nobody goes to trial and difficulties. Hallelujah. You're out of job or your preaching must be so fantastic, your ministry. Nobody has problem in this church. Isn't that a wonderful pastor? Maybe they are lying. I know there's one place that people who live there don't have problems and challenges. It's called the local cemetery. Psalms 84, it's a very interesting psalms. And I believe there's a prophetic word here for somebody. You're going through the valley of tears.
in verse 5 of Psalms 84, it says, Blessed and greatly favoured, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, Blessed and greatly favoured is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart are the highway to Zion. Verse 6, Passing through the valley of weeping, Baca, they make it to a place of springs. The early rain also covered it with blessings. Now here is a pilgrimage journey of a believer of Jehovah. He used the word passing, underlined passing. No matter what season or valley or trial you're going through, tough season don't last. You are passing by. You're going through challenge, you're going through financial difficulty, family problem, or somebody in the house is giving you a problem. You rejoice because you are passing through. Say passing through. And it says valley of Baca, which is a valley of weeping. Tears are powerful. And those who sow in tears will reap with joy. And then it says, they are passing through the valley and they come to a spring of blessing. The word blessing there is Baraka. God is about to send a wind of change that change you from the valley of Baka, valley of weeping, into the valley of Baraka, valley of great blessings. We, we are basically, I'm, I'm basically an itinerant preacher since day one. I've been traveling around the world for the last 35 years. We were based, I'm talking a story about, about 30 over years ago. We were based in a, a, a big church at the point of time. And there was about a thousand people attending the church. And the senior pastor, the former senior pastor was a famous man, a great man. God used him powerfully internationally and everywhere. We even had Benny Hinn came to our church in the year 90, which is amazing. Anyway, the sad part was he fell morally and God spoke to me to take over the church, which I was very reluctant. I cried, I wept, but he sent four prophets who do not know me. And what has happened in the church spoke to me so clearly, I could not run away. So I obeyed and I took over the church for five years. It was Valley of Tears. I lost so many friends. I was slandered. I was called all kinds of names. And, and the church was in great debt. It was in great debt. And we don't even have a salary. You know, uh, when you're an itinerant, uh, your books and your CDs and your tapes sell like hotcake. But when you're in church, nobody buys. Because every Sunday, they, they, they look at you and hear you, right? So, when you preach once a year like here, I'm the greatest preacher in town. <laughs> but if I pastor this church, the story quickly changes. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor Daniel. God is with you. Don't worry, you'll do well. So, so, five years, oh, I lost so many friends. I lost financially. I lost reputation. Everything under the sun. It was literally valley of tears. But it was that time that God blessed us with a miracle baby. The time we were married, we didn't have any children, and God gave us a miracle baby. My son conceived during that time, and he died in the womb at nine weeks. There was not heartbeat. My wife was discharging uh, black decayed blood. And the gynae, the obstetrician, wanted to clean the womb. I said, this is hold on. And um, a week later, we went back and... The heartbeat came back. The baby was back to normal. <laughs> Between nine, six to nine months, about ninth month, the, the doctor told us that I'm monitoring the head of the baby. It's not growing. There's something wrong with the placenta. The placenta is dead, not feeding the baby. So medically, he will be born retarded, uh, whatever, whatever, all the complication. But I just trusted God. Say, trust God. Just trust Him. God gave me a scripture in James 1.17. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of light. And I believe that baby in the womb was a good and perfect baby from the Father. So it has to be good and perfect. So after nine months he was born, he looks like a normal perfect baby. And the best part, he looks like the Father. 
To prove that God did a miracle at 17, we homeschool our son. I understand, Pastor Daniel, you homeschool your children. That's a great thing. We homeschool our son because of our travel around the world. And at 17, he went to study in a university in America. Four-year course, he finished in three years. He got a scholarship, he did law. And today, he's a lawyer working for a law firm in America. What am I saying? Out of the valley of Bakar and tears came the springs of blessing. May you receive the springs of blessing as you sow in tears. Amen. You know, after the five years, God releases us and there was a birth of a new season of our ministry. And God took us to the nations and we began to have international prophetic conference that we organized for the last 20 years. And we have like a thousand people from 30 nations come for our conference. We sponsor pastors from many nations for their free hotel accommodation. And God began to open up for us to minister in churches of mega, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Our books and CD will sell like hotcake. One of my books was translated in the Swedish language. Three of my books were translated in Indonesian language, sold all over Indonesia. I just collect the, what do you call that? Royalty. Sounds good, huh? Sounds like royalty, right? Sounds like the king and queen, right? Royalties. Give Jesus a wonderful clap. So get ready, those of you going through the valley of Bakah, you're about to enter into the springs of Baraka. Amen. So, uh, says birth of a new season. We want to quickly look at the life of Joseph as we close for today's message. I want to encourage you to come for this evening. God has a new word, a fresh word for you this evening. We'll spend more time for ministry and prophesying over some of you. If you believe and you come expecting, somebody told me that you have to come expecting, which is really true. Uh, let's look at the life of Joseph quickly to bring out the truth of the birth of a new season. Now, Joseph's life is very simple, five Ps. Number one, he was at Papa's house where he had the multicolored coat. He got favor. Among the 12 children, Jacob the father favored him. Or how many of you received favor before in your life? Can I see your hand? Now, how do you know you got God's favor and man's favor? Very simple. If somebody is jealous of you, if somebody is angry about you for no reason, that is a good sign you are favored. That's true. That's true. You know, I have somebody wrote about me in the internet, all the false news, the false accusation. Remember I was telling you the story just now about I took over the church and, and all the bad things. And, and this somebody in Malaysia wrote again. I was thinking, oh, Lord bless him. Thank you, Lord, for favor and grace. Anyway, so when you are being slandered and people are jealous of you and angry against you without any rhyme and reason, and they don't even know you. You know what the saddest part is? This, this gentleman, don't, I don't even know him. I haven't even met him. I have not even offended him. If I offended him, fair. But I thank God. You see, you, you, God will vindicate you by the fruits you bear, not by the words you say. God vindicates you by promoting you and blessing you and using you and anointing you. Amen? If God is for you, who can be against you? Give Jesus a wonderful clap. You know, by the grace of God, Two weeks ago, I was in Indonesia, and this friend of mine, he's a pastor of uh, more than 30,000 members, and I've known him for 20 years. My wife and myself have ministered in his church many times. And beginning of this year, he says, Paul, could you come and minister for me this February? I was not keen. I mean, a church of 30 over 1,000 invite you, you're not keen? I say, no, I'm not coming. My itinerary is full for almost the whole year. He says, do you have a word for Indonesia? I say, yes. So I email him. I, I gave him a prophecy that Indonesia will receive such a move of God that the day would come Indonesia, 50% of Indonesia will be saved. 
there's somebody here is from Indonesia. I think you're, you're a worship or musician, right? 50% of Indonesia will be saved. And, and God gave me a prophecy for him also personally. So he says, oh, when can you come? I say, I'm not sure. He say, I will wait. Now, this is a big man, big ministry. When he says, I'll wait, it strikes me. I say, God, this man really wants me to come. God, you want me to go? So I gave him a date two weeks ago and I was there. Wow, what a move of God. They, they were fasting for 40 days, 40 days. And when I was there, they had 10 days of night meeting, night after night, night after night. Oh, that the nation is getting ready for a mighty move of God. Hallelujah. You know, there was one year we went, me and my wife, four services we spoke on Sunday. Just normal Sunday service. Four services. So they asked us to give all the call. And almost 200 people received Jesus for the first time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, God is doing something on earth, including Great Britain. Alright, Joseph's life. So, because of jealousy, the brothers wanted to kill him. How many of you have brothers want to kill you? So he was thrown into the pit. Now, if, you're, if you live long enough, like myself, I'm 62 years, you find that in life, that you go to valley and mountain, God is a God of sunshine and rain. Sometimes you have joy, sometimes you have challenges. You go through season, you go through up and down, up and down. Am I right? The best part is when you go to the valley, valley is the lowest point, mountain is the highest point. So when you're going down the valley, get ready because God is about to promote you to the mountain. So here was Joseph with great dream, great prophetic vision God gave him. He landed in pit. So God preserved him. Now the brothers sold him to the slave market. He landed Third P, Potipa's house. And then he met Mrs. Potipa. And because Joseph, young, handsome looking man, did not sleep with Mrs. Potipa, he was falsely accused and landed in prison. Papa's house, Pete. Potipa's house, prison. How many of you sense God call you to be a preacher? Anybody here? It's not a good calling because, you know what's Pete? It's called preacher in training. Now, the 4P. Can you imagine, Joseph, what he went through? Can you imagine? Your own brothers kill you, sold you in a slave market. It means it's stripped off of your birthright. Do you know that? As a slave, you belong to the owner and you are like a piece of towel. They can take you, use you, abuse you, throw you away. That's what slavery. Now, how many of you know it takes God to restore Joseph? And now he is in prison. He met with a man called the cupbearer. Get ready. God's about to connect you with somebody that will take you to the palace. They will take you to your next level, your next phase, your next ministry. Amen. You know, two years ago, a prophet prophesied that God was going to send me to Europe for ministry. Now, I've been to some countries in Europe, Sweden, Norway, Finland, uh, for ministry before. And um, so, and, and it was quite very quiet, Europe. We, our ministry was America, Australia, Canada, all over Asia, all over Africa. Been to seven countries of Africa. There's a lady from Tanzania. Praise the Lord. I was in Tanzania. Anyway, so when God spoke, you just believe. Amen? You do not see how it's going to be fulfilled and when it's going to be fulfilled. What is so amazing is last year, for the first time, I went to Montenegro. Anybody know where is Montenegro? You don't know? Anybody knows? Montenegro? No? Croatia? Yes, the football country, right? Anyway, we were there, and, and that nation of Montenegro had less than 200 born-again believers. Well, Europe needs missionary. 
not Asia. Europe needs missionary. Europe needs the gospel, believe me. Now, I was speaking in in an apartment. There was about 25 people that evening. Me and my wife were ministering, and there was a lady from Singapore, a missionary in Montenegro, and I gave her a word, a prophetic word. She likes the word. She likes my preaching. And then the next day, we went to her house for lunch. She was married to a Finnish man, and they were missionary in Spain and Uruguay. So while they are talking and fellowshipping, she said to me, Pastor Paul, would you like to go to Spain and Uruguay for ministry? I said, yes. You see, I love to go to new countries. It's, it's, it's that excitement, that call. And I said, yes. Do you know, on Wednesday, I'll be flying to Spain for ministry. Next year, I'll be going to Uruguay. Anybody wants to follow? What am I saying is this. Get ready for new connection. I will expand that more this evening. So I would not want to waste. All right, my time this morning. All right, say the birth of a new season. So what happened? Joseph was promoted from prison to palace. Get ready for promotion. I say get ready for promotion. I do not know what promotion you're looking at. Maybe from a single to a married man, married woman. From a married person, you're praying for a child, you're going to get promotion, you're going to have a baby. And maybe your job, your career, you need a promotion. Or your car is so bombed out, 30 years old, the parts are falling. God's going to give you a promotion and a brand new car. Or maybe you're renting. You are renting houses and it's very expensive, the rental. God's going to bless you with your own house. You do need to pay the rent. Let me quickly share a quick testimony. There was a 53-year-old woman, single, never married, came to our conference. And in that conference, I shared about, uh, about Abraham asking Elysia, the servant, to look for a bride for Isaac. Remember? And there was this 10 camel that was sent, and, and they brought in Rebecca, and Rebecca became the bride of Isaac. I was using that story. So I was saying, hey, get ready. Some of you are going to get married. And this 53-year-old single lady had been praying to get married all these years. She's like, not sure anymore. She was laughing away, and she said, oh, some, some wonderful uh, Arabians, rich Arabians going to come and and marry me. And she was laughing away. And she spoke to my friend who was sitting next to her. And she told me the story. Well, what happened was, shortly after that conference, she met a medical doctor, 57, never get married. Guess what? They got married. So say to your neighbor, there's hope. (laughs) Say there's hope. You can still get married single at 53 and 57. In fact, you can still get married at 90. Nine zero. See, where do you get that? Sarah, Abraham's wife, at 90, the king still wanted to marry her, remember? So, still got hope at 90. At 91, no more hope. I got no more scriptures for you. <laughs> so, Joseph, he was promoted. And guess what? He got married. He had promotion. He was single. He got married. And he gave birth to two sons. They had two sons. Genesis 41, 51, and 52, the last scriptures. So he gave birth to two sons. Say birth. The first son, he called it Manasseh. Genesis 41, verse 51. He called it Manasseh. What does Manasseh mean? It means that God makes me forget all my past, my affliction, my suffering. This morning, the prophetic word says, release your past. You know why? God is about to birth a new season. So forgive, release your past. Let me give you one word. Write it down. There is no future in your past. That's a good sermon. There is no future in your past. So don't waste your past. Whatever has happened, already happened. Don't cry over spilled milk. Maybe, all right, cry for five minutes over spilled milk and then shut up, clean up and move on. If the horse is dead, bury it, get another horse. Amen? So, today, you need to embrace your manasseh. You know why? 
closure of your past, closure of a difficult season, closure of suffering, closure of the valley of tears, and then get ready for the second born. Let me give you a revelation. You know, before you get the second born, you must have the first born. What a powerful revelation. In other words, before you get Ephraim, you must have a Manasseh. You've got to release your past, let go, and then God's going to birth Ephraim in your life. What does Ephraim mean? To be fruitful. Hallelujah. How many wants to be fruitful? How many wants to be blessed? How many wants to be prosperous? For I know... God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a future and great hope. God has great future and great hope for each one of you here. The very fact that you are still breathing means God has an assignment, God has a purpose. Amen. Say, the best is yet to come. Shall we all stand? Hallelujah. Let's all stand. I'm sure you are blessed. And how many of you felt that this message ministered to you and speaks to your heart? Can I see your hand? Just wave that hand at me. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is part one, right? Don't miss part two. It's more exciting. Just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to close right now. Father, I thank you for your word, your living word. And I thank you, Father Lord, for the word in season to the weary. Lord, we have heard so many bad news. The nation, the economy, the Brexit, etc. We have heard bad news of the, about the COVID and people died. We have heard bad news about bankruptcy, losing their job, and etc. But Father, I thank you. There's a wind of change coming. There's a wind of change coming upon our life, upon our church, upon the church of Jesus Christ in Great Britain and upon this great nation. Father, I thank you, Lord, that a new season is birth. A new day is birth. That you're doing something new. It shall spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? There's going to be road in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Bless every person here today as they live. Lord, let them have this living hope that we trust in you. And when we trust in you, we'll not be disappointed. We will not be ashamed because the glory of the latter day shall be far greater than the former. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.